cheese lovers, there's nothing quite like the seductive stink and wonderful savoury flavour of washed dry and cheeses. And one of the most famous comes from right here in the Vosges Mountains of northeastern France. It dates back to the 6th century and takes its name from the Latin for monastery. It is, of course, Munster. One of the interesting paradoxes of Munster is despite its strong smell, the interior has a smooth melting texture and delicious creamy flavour that some people claim is like eating a gooey piece of heaven. The birthplace of this benchmark cheese is Alsace, which lies in the Vosges Mountains bordering France and Germany. It was here in the 6th century that Benedictine monks from Ireland first introduced cheesemaking techniques. Over the following centuries, the surrounding damp pine forested slopes were slowly cleared and the monks' methods were adopted by local farmers living high in the mountain pastures, which are known as the Shona. The craft of making this most delicious washed dry and cheese almost disappeared during the last century, and it only survives today, largely thanks to the commitment of a few small family farms and dairies. My uh, grandfather made monster cheese, my father made monster cheese, and now we have 20 farmers who make for us monster cheese with raw milk. And all the cheese is matured here? Yes, it's important because uh, in one side we have a river, and the other side we have grass. And in the top we have also grass and vegetable. The Exair family run the only non-farm-based dairy in Alsace and also buy young three to four day old cheeses from 20 of the 100 farms left in the region. Known locally as Munster's Joan of Arc, Virginia Exair explained to me why the family's warren of underground cellars was so special. We have a high humidity and a 12 grad of temperature. Wow, look at these. They're fantastic. Yeah. These are Vosgien. You say Vosgien? You say Vosgien. Yeah, they're, they're really friendly. Look. And normally they are used to, to produce milk and meat. It's, uh, I don't know in English, but it's emblematic cow for, vo em for, for, for Munster. And for the area, for the Vosgian, for yeah. the mountain. And, the, and these cows only go outside in summer? Yeah, in the middle of the spring and in summer. And they always sleep here? Yeah. 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 And what about this, this lovely stuff they're eating here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, when they eat up? good uh, grass, yeah. they make good milk and uh, yeah. good uh, cheese. But what is important, the, the grass is uh, coming from this area. It's a Parc Naturel Regional. So it's a, and it's a national park, yeah. that is to say yeah. that the flora and grass is protected. And it always has to be... Uh, Very dry. Dry. And you see you have uh, several kind of... Uh, this... So... Oh, it's a herbage. This sort. Uh, very variety. And of course... And very... Green. And of course that's very important for... Yeah. For the milk. Because that's where you get the real it's character. It's a good breakfast for the cow. And lunch. Mm. And, also. And, and tea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's very, very important. Oy. You you are not you are not able to make good milk if they don't feed very, very well. 
The production of the finest farmhouse cheeses begins with raw milk collected from a breed of cattle called Vosgien, which were originally introduced from Scandinavia in the 17th century. This hardy breed produces a casein-rich milk that is ideal for this type of cheese. Cheese is made twice a day as the fresh milk must be used within two hours of milking. After the addition of starter cultures and animal rennet, the curd is set, cut and drained. Most of the whey is then removed to help reduce acid levels. Hey Christian, explain me the frappe de cachon, the fromage. At the beginning, there's the milking. We have to milk the cows. The milk arrives in this bin, still at 34 degrees Celsius. We then add the rennet to coagulate the milk for an hour. Then, it will be cut into small cubes, like these. We drain about 15% of the whey. And now, we will start to fill the cheese molds, like I'm doing right now. And after half an hour, the cheese will be drained, turned, salted, and finally placed in maturation caves for three weeks. That gives us the final product, the real monster that we know. The most important thing is the milk. It has to be very high quality and used right after the milking. For instance, this cheese is made from this morning's milk. We added the rennet right after the milking. And this is a very important part of making a good monster. To make a monster like this one, we only need four liters of milk. But with another type of cow, like the Holstein, we would need five liters to make the same cheese. After four days, Christian delivers his young monster cheese to the Hexair sellers. Before they're accepted, they must first be tested for quality. Each Tuesday afternoon, uh, we receive all the farmers, and we have about 20 farmers, and we taste all cheeses in order to know if it's good or not. Samples are selected at random to check salt and moisture levels. We look at uh, the cheese, uh, the form, the color, and we taste it in order to, to, to know if it's, uh, the salt is correct or not. Maturation in the cellars takes a minimum 21 days and regular washing with spring water helps to encourage a natural reddish bacteria known as bee linens to migrate from the damp atmosphere and grow on the surface of the rind. One cheese recipe that's famous in Alsace is Munster melted with potatoes. And this simple combination has been perfected by Virginie's mother, Mimi. In fact, my mother will cook you something, a famous recipe of uh, Alsace called Munster coiffé façon Mimi Axer. Take me through the steps. After you, you have an onion, you cut also the onion in small uh, quarters. A recipe begins with fried onions and some pre-cooked potatoes. Yeah. Then you add the potatoes. You wait 10 minutes, they are very brown. And after you take the raw milk monster, it's very important to have a raw milk monster, okay, for the flavor. So you took the, the monster and you cut in slice. And you add in the top. She then adds slices of monster and allows the combination to melt together and form a golden crust. Uh, and this is a traditional dish of the region. Yes, it's an easy dish. 
but for winter time because it's very uh, heavy. Simply serve on a plate with a glass of the local wine for a true Munster piece. Mm. It's really good, and I like the crispy bits. Mm. I think it'd be nice in the oven too. It goes well with the wine. The Mimi. Cheese. Le chef. Chin chin. <laughs> Thank you. The official French appellation name of Munster is Munster Jérôme, a combination of two similar washed rind cheeses once made on either side of the Vosges Mountains. Those made in Alsace were called Munster, whilst the slightly larger Jérôme was made in Lorraine. Their names were combined in 1978 when the new Appalachian rules specified the region where the cheese must be matured, but unfortunately not where it was actually made. Consequently, many brands of Munster are now produced outside the region. Now, the way I really enjoy this cheese is just as it comes, with a nice glass of Gerwitz Stramina. You know, one of the really interesting things I found out is that they serve the cheese here with what they call cumin seed, the seed was originally bought here by Dutch Protestants, and when you look at it, in fact, it's caraway seed. They serve it in the cheese in the Alsace region, but in Paris, they just add a little bit next to the cheese and eat the two together. A great combination of aromatics. These days, storks are famous for nesting on the rooftops of the old churches and buildings in the town of Munster, and you're very unlikely to see a Benedictine monk. But their legacy lives on in the name of the town and, of course, the cheese.